First of all, obviously good news that Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain is going to play for the under-23s this afternoon. Have you had to hold him back at all? Do you anticipate having to hold him back just for his own good as he continues his recovery? No, it was um, Ox is a very smart, smart boy, so it was clear that he needs um, some sessions to 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 prepare himself for the for a game, and then um, he wanted this uh, these games as well. So I would say maybe these games we will see this game for sure. And um, so everything I said already a couple of times looked very positive, but it was a long time that he was out, and so we all need to be sensible eh? and um, and do the right thing in the right moment. And we all think it's now the right moment. Hopefully uh, it is like that. And um, so. Derby, good opponent. We, we had uh, on Monday night the, our derby against Everton with the U23s. So, yeah, it's, when, as I watched that game uh, live in the stadium, so it would have been okay, absolutely, but I was not sure <laughs> um, about the intensity of the game and if it's the right thing then to do it, um, for the, to, to you choose that game for the first time. But so now he's ready and now we let him go, let him start, and um, yeah. All are excited about that, of course. Obviously, going into this weekend's fixtures, it's the first time since December that you've trailed Manchester City, having played the same number of games. So what approach do you take with the players to make sure that that's not something that, that maybe affects them? The good thing, we don't have to change, really, because we never thought about it, um, what uh, what the other teams are doing. It's our, the plan is clear, we have to win <laughs> football games. It's difficult enough. Um, we will not, um, I think I think City plays on Saturday, right? Do they? Yeah, so then probably we will know the result before we start, yeah? before we start our game. So there's no no reason to, to make a big fuss of it. It's like it is. We, we are in a position we like to be. We, we, we like the position before. It's not a problem. What we always said, we wanted to be in a position to, to fight for, for, for the top spot in, the, in that league. And um, we are still in. And that's all what we need to be positive, to be optimistic, to be excited in a very positive way about the, the, the challenge and all that stuff. But it's it, you know, our only problem this weekend is Burnley, actually, and it's, uh, that's enough. Uh, we have to, yeah, we have to be really good eh, to be that team because um, what John Dijk is doing there is, is just amazing because it's um, for now, since I'm in, always, always um, I, I would say probably not with the best circumstances in the league, but um, keeping that club in the league constantly and um, with a difficult start this season, um, and now being again, I think five points ahead, and um, yeah, had a good run in the last couple of weeks. Now the last two results maybe not that good, but so we know that it will be really tough, and that's what we prepare for. And Mo Salah still one goal away from 50 Premier League goals for Liverpool. If he scores this weekend, he will equal Alan Shearer's record. But last weekend, was there any element of frustration for him at all, not being able to set that record by himself? Oh, well, we, 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 had, we have very often uh, talks and everything. And of course, if you, when you're a striker or offensive player and you have chances in a game, you want to score with them. That's clear. But it's a guy, as a manager, I'm more than used to to that. That it's um, that. Uh, it, players don't score all the time, so that's how it is. He has an un unbelievable record, so that's all. His goals brought us where we are. That's uh, not only, but it was a big part of it. And um, so, we, no, we didn't. We didn't really speak about it or whatever because it's completely normal. Eh? We have to, we have to create chances, and as long as we do that in a very difficult game against Everton, for different reasons, difficult. Um, we had, I would say, four or five proper. Chances. We, we had we had less than that in games when we won against Everton. To be honest, and um, this game, um, yeah, always one Everton lag was in between us and the goal and um, or Pickford or whatever. So that's the situation, but nothing else. Uh, can I start with a, a little injury update about how everybody's doing? If, if anybody is back or out that we don't know about. It's a, it's a rather positive moment, but it's not that they are. But so it looks all really good. So they are trained, obviously, the last. No, yesterday, first time, full, completely normal. Um, then Joe is now running with 
how, how do we say that, with 100% um, of his weight, <laughs> so because we have different opportunities to, to, to run, obviously, and now he's, um, yeah, he's really at 100%, that's good, so uh, that looks good, it's, but most of the things will be probably rather around um, after the, the international break, well, for example, Joe and stuff like that. But Dejan, we have to see. Dejan was out really out again um, for a, for a while, so we have to see how his how his fitness is exactly. So he's not injured anymore. He's fit, but how fit we have to see. Um, what else? Reentrained, looked really good, but he's in a uh, in a situation. I would say um, Ox was maybe three weeks ago or so, but um, in a really good way. You need to help me. Who else? James. Joe. Oh. Who was Jordan? Jordan. Jordan? Jordan. Jordan is fine. Um, Millie, yeah, Millie. We will have to see. So it's Millie. <laughs> so everything heals quicker uh, with Millie. But um, he was already outside yesterday. Yes, he had a little bit with uh, with um, a little muscle um, issue, but um, still three days, three days to go until the game. And I think if you ask Millie, he said I will be ready, but. We have to see. He didn't. He trained yesterday with the rehab coach, and um, we will see what he's doing today. And, and just as far as Joe is concerned, obviously it was this reverse fixture last time when it actually happened. Looking back now, at the, maybe the bigger picture of things. How do you feel about that? There's nothing to say about that anymore. But what you do now is try. If I say what I said that time, then you create another headline with something what happened. Um, I don't know. It was early December. Uh, nearly three months ago, so nothing, nothing new to say about that. It's, it was an injury happened then, and he's still not playing. That's all what you can say about that. That's how it happens sometimes in football, and um, yeah, nothing else to say. Um, listening to that, though, Jurgen, without nothing to say and creating headlines, do you, as managers, do you have regrets when sort of fallout situations occur after, after matches or because of? Say, for example, injuries as, as Joe sustained. What kind of regrets? Laid out afterwards, like managers just in general, when they, they have these fallouts. I mean, all human beings, we react on a moment. So that's how it is. What can you say? It's a, I, I made a lot of mistakes in my life, and um, most of the time I regret them, but I don't know what's, what's now, what, what's with it, what it has it to it's do with It's just when them. managers fall out and the way it played out afterwards, though, it's sort of going between yourselves and, and Burnley with, with Sean Dyche saying things and you were saying things and responding I have no to idea him. what Sean Dyche said after the game, to be honest with you. I, I, I don't read that. So if he said something for me, it's, for me the game is a very special situation. And um, we are all in, a, in different circumstances than you probably can imagine. So, um, and what is said in and around the game, I have no clue about after the game, actually. And um, so, um, that's all. Uh, that's, re that's really all. So, from my, from my point of view, absolutely, that's, I don't think there's anything to regret, but I'm not, not sure. Um, but I have no bad feelings when I think about that game because of something, well, something what happened in the past. Absolutely not. Jürgen, nine games to go in the Premier League. You've got big Champions League matches on the horizon as well. I like that you said matches. I love that. Um, is it a stage of the season where you do you alter the tempo of the build-up, the, 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 the training sessions, just because of the intensity of the season that's happened and what's to come? Do you, do you take it with things or, or doesn't it work like that? No, no, we 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 had we had a a good training week. Uh, really, it's a long one. That that's good, and we had to we, we could do a lot of things, and hopefully we can see that in the game. So I, I like that. It, it's always preparing. If you have time to train, you always have to really work hard. It's not if you don't have time to train, you cannot work hard in training because then you only recover and and prepare more the the the, the, the slight tactical changes or whatever what you have to do for the next game. But this week we could do a lot, and we can do it today. A lot, for example, and that's that's very important. But you cannot then only, um, I don't know, play rondos through the week and, and hope that the players don't get injured or something like that. Um, you have to you have to be then really focused on the things you want to improve or you want to keep for the rest of the season. There's a, and there's a lot. Um, we had a, I, I like the week we had, but now um, we always the, the most intense session of the week is always the game, should be always the game, and so um, yeah, we should be ready for that. But we have to. And Burnley, you touched on before, and I know they've lost a couple of matches recently, but, but since Boxing Day, their general form has been as good and better than, than most clubs. And 
I think um, Sean Dice mentioned for Burnley a case of going back to basics and you know they've got Ashley Barnes up front Chris Wood they've got Peter Crouch who comes off the bench how much of a threat can do they represent? Oh, they're so, they are, they are so consistent in what they are doing and I said it was this year when they started in the European League right in the qualification this season yeah so and that's I had the similar situation at Mainz 15 years ago nearly and it's a, and we lost then we had to, had to play the qualifiers in the European League and we lost the first five Bundesliga games not because we were worse, just because we were not used to it. That's how it is. And um, that, um, it was really uh, an interesting period. <laughs> and then, of course, and, and Burnley, I think, stands really for, for a specific way, way to play. Very physical, very intense, really good organized, um, set pieces brilliant, um, quick transition, counter-attacks, that's all, that's all really good, chasing each ball. So, and that's, I, I don't know, I was not with them, of course, but that's, if you play what was it, Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, you have to travel a lot and all that stuff. Yeah, that can keep a, or can take a bit of energy away. And in the early stages of a season, it's anyway difficult for all of us that you don't know exactly how long will you take to be really in the season. But uh, the impressive part of it is how they how they did it then in, in a very difficult season again. Eh? Um, not only for Bernie, for all of us, but where, where everybody fights from match day five or six for everything. Eh? So where, where then the basis is created and now let's go for it. Eh? Either way you fight for the league, so staying in or winning it or European or Champions League and all that stuff. Then having this kind of a lot of comebacks actually in that season already. That's that's just really impressive, and that's all my respect. Really good. <laughs> wow. Um, just on Burnley, I'm just wondering: Are you expecting from the analysis you've done the same approach that they 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 took to the game when you played them at Turf Moor? I mean, have they played the same way against other teams since then? Because they played against you that day, and are you expecting the same on Sunday? Oh, the, the, the game at, for us at Turf Moor is not most important for the analyze because it's really three months ago, so there are so many games in between. But I think it's pretty clear well, that they, they, they tried a couple of times playing with five in the back. Um, if I'm right, it doesn't work out 100% um, result-wise at least. And so we, we should expect four in the back, four in midfield, two strikers, as you said it already. Um, Barnes and Wood, really good, quick, good in the air. Deflected balls going behind, um, then have good wings. Uh, that's um, where, where they come in, in behind midfield, pushing up, all that stuff. Centre halves, pullbacks, a lot of crosses. Obviously, that's what we what we should expect from that game, yeah, of course. But um, it's now not like this that they have um, the majority of, of possession in the games usually, and um, so means we need to have, we need to create, we need to have ideas, we need to be in, in a very lively way patient as well and um, so that's the challenge for all these games I think historically it's against Burnley always difficult because they are really have a high motivation level always they're really fighting they're really fighting they never give up not even in a game I don't think they have a lot of high results when when they lose especially um, they always stay in the game how is that that's really um, when you have then um, when you make the analysis and you watch the last three, four games, you have to say, uh, uh, respect, that's really, that's really good. So uh, they beat Tottenham and um, that doesn't happen a lot of times in a year that somebody beats Tottenham. So that was, of course, very, very good. And now the last two games, yeah, they were obviously um, slightly different, but I'm pretty sure they are really looking forward to that game on Sunday because they see and they feel they have a chance and we have to make sure that that will not happen. That's all. Um, 12 o'clock kickoff is not ideal, but you've we have it. that. We have that always, and it's always when we play at 12 o'clock. I think everybody, uh, any or somebody, always asks that question. I, I hope we stop that. I don't think our record is that bad anymore. We, we, maybe it was. And it was for sure because of me, because I was not used to it. Uh, we can, I, I really thought, that I think the first time we had a 12, I'm not sure if it was the first time, but we played. European League on Thursday, and then we had to go to Swansea, and this was the first time I was tired in a meeting. So that that really doesn't happen because I wake up early anyway. So that's gone. Uh, we don't have these issues anymore. Um, I hope for 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 our people, and because that will be very important. We, we we spoke a lot about that, but we need we need atmosphere. 
uh, at 12 o'clock. And um, I said for sure last time as well. So if you if you are, have a ticket for the stadium, so go to bed at 10 o'clock latest on Saturday <laughs> night. Don't drink. Yeah, and yeah, be on your toes from the first until the last second. That's it.